Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. Today we'll be taking a look at Black Matter Ransomware. This is a brand new threat that has evolved from the ashes of Darkseid. Remember that? The ransomware that attacked the U.S. colonial pipeline system? I know seeing lines at the pumps or gas stations with no gas can be extremely stressful. Yes, that one. Shortly after it became an international incident, everybody started talking about it. There were essentially bounties issued for hunting down this ransomware group that kind of tried to disappear. And now it seems the actual threat has resurfaced under a different name. Now if we go ahead and execute it, as you will see, it is very fast in terms of performing its operations. So if we go ahead and run this, I think within a few seconds it's going to encrypt everything on this computer. We'll just have our documents folder so you can see it happen. You already have a ransom note on the desktop and it's all done. If we go ahead and open the ransom note, it just says black matter. Um, it's got a picture of, I guess, Saturn maybe? Or maybe it's a black hole like I have on the desktop. And it says your network is encrypted and currently not operational. We only need, <laughs> we need only money. After payment, we will give you a decryptor for the entire network, which will restore all the data. Now, they seem to have this emphasis on the fact that we need only money. We're not political. We're not a nation state entity. Don't come after us. I don't know what that means. It's like if you're trying to extort people, that's criminal activity, right? So it's just a bit bizarre, uh, the wording of it. But there's even another paragraph below that talks about this. We are not a politically motivated group and we do not need anything other than your money. <laughs> if you pay, we will provide you programs for decryption. This is hilarious. And then of course, as usual, it asks you to install the Tor browser, open some Onion domain and pay them the ransom. The ransom amount will likely vary depending on who is attacked does seem like it has changed the desktop background as well. Now let's take a look at this threat in um, Fars Total. So if we take a look at the graph, interestingly, as you will see, it does connect to a lot of potentially malicious domains. The countries it connects to the United States, Netherlands, and uh, Singapore, interestingly. Now there are some similar files and we will talk about that a, a bit more in this segment because I want to discuss this phenomenon that we see where a ransomware group essentially pretends to dissolve and then re-emerges with the same malware, the same code. Maybe it's a different group, maybe it's the same group, maybe they just keep changing their names to make it harder to track. Maybe law enforcement could be getting a clue about their operations and sometimes this does happen. They are able to physically locate the CNC servers, take it down, recover the keys sometimes, or at least just shut down the ransomware operations. And I'm guessing this is likely a tactic to prevent that. Once a criminal group gains a certain level of notoriety, they just pretend to dissolve or disappear, shut down their operations, and then they just reemerge with a new name. The cycle starts again. Now, this video is brought to you by Intizer, which is another platform like Vars Total, where you can essentially scan any files and they use genetic mapping technology to find similar threats as well as give you a comprehensive analysis. So we're going to take a look at this threat in Intizer. And right off the bat, as you can see, the most interesting thing we see here is that this is closely connected to Darkseid, the ransomware group I mentioned at the beginning. Now it also gives us a percentage match in terms of correlation, so 8.23% similarity. Interestingly, we don't see any strings that are actually similar with the file that we uploaded. So they have overhauled the threat internally, but Intizer is still able to detect the similarities because of the code genes. We can also see the dynamic execution of this threat. So this is the process it launches in memory. And if we click on it, we can see the strings that are dumped and also some of the MITRE capabilities. So command and scripting interpreter and shared modules on the execution side of things, obfuscation from defense evasion and system information discovery. But again, just watch out for this ransomware because I believe this is going to be behind some targeted attacks in the future. If it is the same group behind it, don't forget to back up your data and also maintain a robust recovery strategy. So the problem with a lot of organizations when they're conducting their backups 
is that they will have a backup plan, but that's just instituted when maybe their ID infrastructure was being set up and they never revisit it. So yeah, they have backups from maybe a year ago and maybe some of that doesn't work. And also they don't know how to restore their systems or there's some critical part that cannot be restored. So even if on paper they have backups, they're in big trouble when they're attacked. And this is most likely you if you're in a business. So actually go through the scenarios like, okay, we're hit by ransomware today. How are we going to recover from that? And if you can't recover within a certain time frame, then your backup strategy just doesn't work. I guess some backup is better than no backup, but it is worth spending some time to analyze and assess these scenarios and think about how you're going to get your systems to running and functional if the worst case event were to happen. This is also a great exercise if you're a home user, right? Just imagine your PC is hacked today. How are you going to recover? What's the procedure? I myself for my home systems have a plan to get back up and running within a day. And I suggest you do the same. It's not that difficult these days because we do rely heavily on online services and a lot of stuff is in the cloud, which is a vulnerability in itself, but it does help when your main system gets bricked. And you know, if you're a business, it's worth considering how much of your data is in the cloud versus locally. How often do you back up? And most importantly, what is your recovery process? What does it include? And how quickly can it get the systems operational again? Now, going back to our dynamic execution analysis, this is powered by the CAPE sandbox. So if you may be familiar with that, as we can see, there's a trusted file that's dropped. Interestingly, there's another drop and it's being analyzed. And this is an unknown installer. Now, looking at the file metadata, it seems this threat was compiled on the 23rd of July, 2021. So fairly recent in terms of the compilation timestamp, it's only 70 kilobytes. So very compact. Then if we go back to Vars total, we can take a look at the creation time. The first submission, which is a good day to go by, was 3rd August. So first time this thing was seen and uploaded to Vars total is a few days ago. If we take a look at the detections, most AVs will of course detect this. So if you're using good endpoint security, that should be fine. There are still a few that don't. I'm assuming that behavioral defenses should be able to pick up the behavior because it is quite similar to a major threat. But this is again where our tests come into play. That's why I like to do these tests with different samples or turning off the signatures because sometimes you can have a case like this where the vendor may have a signature for dark side ransomware, but the black matter ransomware is not going to match that signature because it's sufficiently different. However, it uses the same techniques and it's very similar behaviorally. So if the vendor was able to block dark side behaviorally, they will still be able to block black matter, even if they've never seen it before. Now, another thing that's really cool about Intizer is we can actually look at the code clusters that are detected as malicious, and these actually correlate to assembly instructions. So as you can see, you've got the assembly view on the right side, and we can see exactly which clusters were detected, and that allows us to write really extensive YAR rules to flag potentially similar samples in the future. There's also a little virus total link here, so that's quite convenient. Now, if we go into behavior, um, the results are quite similar to what we saw on our VM. So didn't really evade this uh, virtual execution. In terms of network activity, paymenthacks.com got a response. We can also see all the files read and written. This is probably just the encryption behavior, deleting and uh, rewriting files. In terms of registry activity, mostly this is just reading data to collect information about the system that it's running on. But I doubt there is a kill switch for this threat at least not that I'm aware of. So there you have it. That is uh, Black Matter ransomware. If you want to know if you're protected against it, I guess a good comparison would be if your systems would be able to behaviorally block dark side without blacklisting, then they should fare well against Black Matter. I've also added this to our sample queue. So next time we do a ransomware test, we'll include this. Like and share the video if you enjoyed it. Also, once again, thanks to Intizer for sponsoring this video. It's a really cool platform and anyone can use it. Just go to analyze.intizer.com and you can upload any file that you think is suspicious and it's going to analyze it for you. And as you saw, it has a very unique genetic analysis, especially in the case where a threat isn't detected by the AVs on VARS total. 
you can still make a really good judgment based on how similar the code is to other malware. There's several really cool videos coming up, so don't forget to subscribe to the PC Security channel. And if you're interested in working with us, feel free to reach out at thepcsecuritychannel.com. This is Leo. Thank you for watching. And as always, stay informed, stay secure.